G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be reviewing the game between Geelong and North Melbourne, which was down in Tassie, uh, Blundstone Arena. In what was, yeah, tough conditions it must be said. But uh, Geelong come home with a 40 point win and notch up our 12th win of the season. Wasn't the best game of all time to watch and you know, a couple of little stressful moments, but outside of that, did what we had to do, really, and, and found our way to get the four points uh, in the end. We were able to sort of overwhelm North Melbourne, uh, yeah, with uh, experience and, yeah, a little bit more class to finish the job off. So, yeah, I mean, I, I almost have a disclaimer every time uh, you have a game where you beat a side that's, you know, down a bit lower on the ladder. Um, every game's tough to win and, you know, you've got to be close to your best every week to find a way to win. Uh, we we did that. So, yeah, response from the pretty ball performance against the Dogs uh, last week. So, yeah, um, this game doesn't make me go, oh, look out, competition, uh, or we're the best team in it. So I <laughs> just want to put those disclaimers out there before I uh, get stuck into the review. I'll treat the game in isolation first and foremost, and then we talk... You know, a bit more philosophically uh, towards more the end of the video. I can only uh, call on what has been shown uh, for a given game. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Let's get stuck into it, though. Uh, North started off, yeah, reasonably well. They definitely got their forward handball game going. They got us out the back a few times. Uh, they were clean and slick early. And it was, wasn't looking too great to start off with. It was a little bit frustrating, but we were able to, yeah, arrest the momentum a little bit, up the pressure a little bit. That, uh, you know, put us in a pretty good spot to create some turnover. And then, yeah, we were able to get a few chances and, and make them count, which which was good to see. And, yeah, second term, another three-goal quarter there. We kept North a little bit quieter on the scoreboard. And, you know, started to get in a bit more of cruise control. And, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a great game to watch. I'll, I'll put uh, put that out there. Um, yeah, it's not one you'll, you'll chuck back uh, on as a replay. Maybe for some individual highlights, some some uh, poor goal line stuff from North Melbourne throughout the afternoon definitely let us in a bit. And, yeah, put the game... Well... North, North uh, brought it back to 10 points and, and then we were able to yeah, flex the muscles. So, yeah, they kicked three in a hurry and then it was looking... That was probably the only real time in the game where I was like, oh, okay, if they keep this up, then we're in a bit of strife. Uh, but then we were able to... Again, yeah, uh, you know, when you play a game of footy, you have to win it a few times. You, you can't just play well in the first quarter and then just coast through the next three quarters. You, you have to have to win it back a few times. And, and that's what we had to do. So North started off well. We responded... Uh, you know, we somewhat had... Uh, it was never felt uncomfortable outside of the... Sort of the three to start with and then the three that North kicked pretty quickly in that five-minute patch. Um, so, again, yeah, that that midfield battle was obviously important and North trounced us there early. We were able to arrest that throughout the game after they initially had, I think, six to one in, in the clearances. So they were... Yeah, and setting a bounce clearances, they were, they were pretty... Explosive there as well. I think what we can take pride on is our tackle pressure. Pressure in general was able to sort of at least yeah, minimise their damage, sort of you know moving up forward. So they end up with yeah ten goals, so relatively low score all considering, and we were able to notch up one hundred and six points ourselves with uh, you know some, a few players out and a couple of injured throughout as well, especially out forward. Um, yeah, so I look in terms of what I liked about the game, uh, our pressure, yeah, you know, it was good at times. There were some missed tackles. Uh, there was a few fumbles that you know, <laughs> you always say a few fumbles, things that absolutely uh, make me the the grind my gears are intercept marks against uh, your team inside D fifty when it's long and high. It's a slow play. No one flies up for it. Uh, that's probably one of the most frustrating things. Um, another really frustrating thing. Is just when you're like literally half a second from being out, like that that next handball will just like set set a goal up, and then there's just like a fumble or they spend it before they earn it. That, that kills me. <laughs> oh, what else kills me in footy? 
Yeah, uh, goals in red time probably kill me as well. Um, yeah, it's just like not playing down the last second, just going, oh, no, nah, it probably won't happen. Then then it does happen. Um, footy's like Murphy's Law. If, if it can happen, it will happen. Um, and if it's never happened, that's going to happen, <laughs> basically. A bit of a mouthful, but yeah. Um, but the positives, though, we, we were strong enough to be able to yeah, arrest the tide even after... Yeah, when a young side gets on a run, that can be yeah, really promising for them and give them the leg up that they need because they need to see results, you know, probably more so than maybe the more experienced sides, um, especially early on. And if they get that sort of their tails up, they can kind of make it a really tough game to, uh, uh, I suppose, get hold of the momentum again and sort of reassess. But, yeah, we, we found a way to, again, yeah, just find some scrungy goals and, and get back into the game. Ollie, Ollie Henry, sorry, Ollie Dempsey was uh, able to do that. And, you know, we had some... Uh, off the back of our intercept game, I have to say that I was really impressed with that. I think we took like 23 or 27 intercepts, um, intercept marks even possibly. And some of that was North Melbourne just not executing properly. Um, might have been some of the conditions. Hopefully some of our pressure landed on that. Um, I will say the better sides won't make that many mistakes... But what's interesting there, though, is Hawthorne have been one of the hottest teams in the comp and we were able to, yeah, do that against the Hawks. So I reckon there's a bit of both in there. Uh, I would like to say it's more about the Cats' pressure, but, yeah, North Melbourne, again, they're a side, young side, sort of developing. Um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll get better. Um, we were able to, yeah, execute in front of goal. I think we kicked seven straight in front of the big sticks uh, from, from set shots. So we made our chances count when we did. Uh, had some decent entries. Again, in that kicking inside 50, I reckon, can do with some work. And, you know, have some players that can kind of get on the lead, get on the move a bit more, rather than just waiting for the long high kick and trying to take a, you know, a crazy contested pack mark every time. That's something we definitely need to improve on and just have players across that. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm most mostly pleased with, with the result without thinking whether look out <laughs> that's one of those games you, you just you just have to get the four points sometimes we, we found a way we got the four points got a couple of percentage points back um so yeah sometimes that's that's all you can do you, you can't win by 100 points every week not in this even competition but north got more of the ball um yeah plenty of handball game going there our kicking game was on song Inside 50s, we've got plenty of supply, almost 60 inside 50s, and then north, uh, almost 50 for them. I have to give kudos to the back line as well. I think, yeah, they, they got a little bit of supply, but we were able to, yeah, be in position to nullify, I suppose, uh, their four race forward. Disposal efficiency, a lot of uncontested ball game going, um, and yeah, so pr pretty even there. Efficiency inside 50, even though... Yeah, we, we didn't... Uh, oh, yeah, we still got a fair bit of supply, but almost one in two. North, uh, for, you know, just shy of that 40% mark for efficiency inside 50. That's something when we have got inside 50, we've generally been pretty good. Um, the games we've struggled in probably haven't had the same supply and the, the opposition defence has just been a bit too good and we've been a bit bit poor, um, either moving it in or forwards leading out. Ruck battle was uh, interesting. I think uh, Sherry got uh, <laughs> had a day out, as expected. Clearance battle, North just won that one. The center clearances ended up even by the end of the game. Uh, around the ground, North got the job done there. Contested ball, North by 11 there. I'm just going to check their score shots. So they had 16 shots. We had 26, so that, that, that's good to see. M made, it, uh, made it all happen, which is good. All right, so uncontested ball. North got a little bit more on the outside. They turned it over a bit, as we, as we saw there. Ten more turnovers than us. Marks were able to control the game reasonably well. Plus 23 in that camp. Marks inside 50, relatively even, uh, all in all. We definitely did a lot of uh, ground ball stuff, which, you know, it was good to see. Sometimes that can be an area which is a, you know, slightly lacking, but it was okay today. Well, yesterday when the game was played. And in front for most of the game. Time in front's a really good stat. Um, underrated stat, really, I think. But, yeah, to be in front for most of it seems reflective of how the game was played. North out tackled us. Also had a bit, little bit more of the ball. So, that, yeah, their pressure was pretty good, I, I must say. 
they, they didn't give us a stack of time and space. So I'm kind of impressed that you know, we're able to withstand that. This stat I love. I love it. Scotty, Cats players, this, this, this is good. This is really good. It's so much easier to kick goals when you're already in your forward 50. <laughs> 19 tackles inside 50, so the pressure there was great. Bit of run and dash as well. More one percenters for North. And that was, uh, yeah, a bit of a look at the game from a stats perspective across the teams. Go over to the Cats. Votes were interesting. There's some yeah, there's plenty of good performances. I mean, you hope so when, when you win. Win by 40 points. Uh, but Tommy Stewart gets the three votes for me. He had 32 for the game, nine marks. Also had a tackle, four clearances, 500 metres gained. He was the architect. He was getting it done in the middle. And then he went behind the ball. And he was able to impact a contest behind the ball as well, win it back, and then drive us forward again. So, yeah, he's the reverse Dusty. He plays a really good role. And that's off the back of 76% game time. So that was great. It was a period where he was off for probably seven or eight minutes. Um, so that, that's an incredible effort, all, all considering... You know, with the time on ground that he did have. Two votes. I'm going to go with Tyson Stengel, my man. He kicked three, had 11 touches for the game, also took a mark and five tackles, two clearances and a goal assist. So four direct goals from Tyson. And, you know, that most of them, well, basically all, all three of them were pretty mercurial. Uh, sort of, you know, not easy goals that you could kick every day, but uh, they're a little bit easier for him. He finds a way. I thought just when we needed something, it was a critical moment. We needed some class. Uh, he was there all day long to be able to provide that. So, yeah, he was able to put that gap in the game that almost no one else could. And then the one vote, I'm going to go with Lawson Humphreys. He's getting in the vote slightly, so he must, he's, he's doing something right. Uh, yeah, the 21, almost had a, a goal next to his name. He did a little snap, uh, five marks, and clearance almost 500 metres gained. Yeah, I just love his run and dash off half back, his contest work, his ability to null, you know, sort of uh, nullify contests and you know, neutralise them. He, he was really good again. I thought, yeah, his dash was instrumental, and I thought, yeah, he was, he was one of our finest players on the ground. Okay, let's go to the rest of the Cats crew. We've got uh, Jezza uh, up near the top. He had two goals, two for the game at 19, eight marks, three tackles, two clearances, lots of metres gained. So, yeah, he... I mean, when when I looked at the game in isolation, I thought oh, he was a little bit quiet, but was able to work his, himself into the game. Hit the scoreboard. Um, I'm keen for him to get those snaps back, back, back in through the big sticks, but yeah, he'll, he'll get there. But pretty solid game from Jez, all considering. Jackie Bowes had the 20 touches, also had five marks, nine tackles, plenty of tackles, three clearances, and a goal assist. Yeah, just just cracks in each and every week. Uh, I mean, the midfield for North did pretty well, I thought. But, you know, Bowes with the pressure there, um, yeah, it was really good for us. Graham Myers, a little bit quiet. He had the 21, seven marks, seven tackles, three clearances, but two goal assists. You, you'll take that every day of the week. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just used to seeing him out in space and then just dart, darting every kick inside 50. But, I mean, even still, he was a little bit like Jez where I didn't think he played amazingly well. Uh, but looking at it now, yeah, that's a pretty decent game. You take 20 and, and two goal assists uh, from his leg. Or he could have handballed it. That's not impossible, well, I dare say. Likely from uh, his deadly right foot. Over to Maxi Holmes. He kicked a goal, hit the 22, five marks, five tackles, seven clearances, goal assist. Yeah, he was really good for us. Uh, just needs to sort out these kicking a little bit. He can blaze it away a little bit. He can sort of run 100 miles an hour and then just kick it straight back to the opposition. So that, that can do with some work. Uh, but in, in general, I, I thought, yeah, his uh, run and carry was, was really positive for us. Ollie Dempsey, uh, very good, very good, and almost could have got a vote, maybe a bit stiff not to, but I will digress. He kicked three, had 18 touches, two marks, five tackles, clearance, and a goal assist. So, yeah, four goals directly from his great work. Uh, yeah, very opportunistic, very smart footballer, works really hard, and, yeah, lo loved his game. Mitchie Duncan had the 22, seven marks, and a tackle. 
he just yeah he just cracks in every week just goes where the team needs him glides through the middle and um yeah sets up teammates in the scoring chain Blitz is a bit quiet, but he played uh, plenty of ruck. He had the 25 here, that's with his 10 touches, five marks, five tackles, also got, got a clearance. Uh, Sherry played pretty well, but Blitz's hands were, were good, took some good marks for us. Ollie Henry was back to some better form, so he, he kicked the two. He loved, loved his two, uh, two goals. He kicked that for the game, had 18 touches, so he's very uh, active. He's usually a you know, seven to 10 possession a game sort of player, and then he got the five marks. Also had a tackle, but yeah, very lively out forward for us and, and did well. Uh, Zach Guthrie liked his game. He had the 14, six marks, four tackles and a clearance from his three quarters of game time. Yeah, look, he's he's really good for us. I think, yeah, I don't think anyone got off the chain too badly in the D50 from the smalls, but yeah, again, he, he just jumps in, packs, jumps in front, Gets the ball, wins it back for us, and you know he loves a bit of run and carry as well. Mentioned about Hun- Humphreys, who got a vote. Brattles, he kicked a goal, had the 14, five marks, four tackles. Yeah, his game was really positive for us. We, we love it when he gets the pressure going on, when he, he gets those, <laughs> those fleet of foot uh, plays going as well. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he played well for us. Busey was back in. He had uh, 13, seven marks, four tackles, a couple of clearances. So, yeah, you, you'll take that. Um, yeah, good, good to see him back into the side to have a go. We probably lack a little bit of, you know, the lockdown small defender. Um, don't have too many of those guys. So it, it is good to, yeah, see Jed back into the side to take take it on and, you know, beat opponents. Over to Jack Henry. He had the 13 disposals, nine marks. He knows how to rack up those marks. I thought, yeah, he took some nice contested marks as well. A little bit more confidence for Jack uh, off the back of that game. I think, uh, not sure, I think Larky might have kicked two. I don't know if he was on him directly. Okay, Larky kicked three, yep. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, he played, he played all right. Uh, Larky still had a couple next to his name, but all in all, yeah, he, he was he's better than he has been. Shawnee Manor, love this guy. He had the two goals. 12 disposals, two marks, three tackles, three clearances. Just gets involved. He's really hungry. He's desperate. Uh, and I just love his output every week. He's yeah, he's becoming a fine player for us. Scratch kicked a goal. He had 11 disposals as well. Took a mark, four tackles. Did a bit of ruck work as well, clearance, and also a goal assist. So a couple of goals from Scratch with his involvement in the game. Really good to see Tanner back into the side. He had the 16 disposals for the game. He had the three marks, three tackles, three clearances. And, uh, yeah, he, you know, they sort of uh, nursed him back in. He was good inside the contest. Had some you know, good clearance wins um, out to the side and then straight out the front of the stoppage, which was really positive. Collar had the 14 disposals, four marks, and a tackle. I'm not sure who he was playing on, but I'm sure it'll be someone tall up forward. And I think all in all, he, he was yeah, he played well. Paddy Boy, he kicked a goal, had the 12 disposals, took a mark, a couple of tackles, a few clearances, uh, 70% game time. So, yeah, I'm wondering whether we could get a rest for Paddy, and I'm not really sure when that's going to come along because, yeah, I mean, in terms of games coming up, we've got Adelaide, which we just have to win at home. I mean, most games we just have to find a way to win. Um, but yeah, like it's gonna be gonna be tough to find a rest for him. I, I want him if we are to sort of make finals and we're you know if we do everything right, we'll make finals. We want Paddy if we are to win finals, we're gonna need him at you know 110. percent So I don't know the solution to that. This week might have been the ones to do, but you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. If you don't play him, we lose, and it's like why didn't you play him? So yeah, it's a, it's a fine balance. SDK was pretty solid. He was down back a bit more this week. He had the 11 disposals, four marks. Seemed to be clunking them nicely, which is good to see. Ted Close, he played a bit of the game, uh, coming on as the sub. He had the four disposals, five tackles. Good pressure. We liked that. A couple of marks as well. Gary okay, Rowan was the... Well, he wasn't the sub. He was subbed out with uh, concussion, unfortunately. But, yeah, he had the three disposals for the game, two marks, two tackles. Just couldn't quite get into it. He was, yeah, I don't know if he's got any issues with the hands or it was a bit 
Bajui out there, but yeah, he just couldn't quite clunk him, couldn't quite um, keep his you know sticky mitts on them. It just wasn't quite happening for him. So I suspect he'll clearly miss next week, and yeah, hopefully back to the side soon, nice and fresh. Well, let's have a look at the ladder, which is just snakes and ladders uh, everywhere. Sides moving around. There's madness going on everywhere. There could be a game going at the moment. So I've got the live ladder up at the moment. Uh, as we stand, Geelong sitting six on the table. Uh, absolute logjam between, yeah, like on second at the moment. Just everyone's got, you know, <laughs> 12 wins. One, two, three, four, five, six teams on 12 wins is just unbelievable. Uh, what it... Yeah, we're super lucky to have a season like this. Um, yeah, we've got 11 sides that have won at least 10 games. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a crazy year, and there's still a lot to be played out. Sydney got the dogs very shortly, and that, that'll be a ripper game. But, yeah, we're sitting sixth at the moment, but quite clearly a little bit of percentage points, a little bit of a win here and there, a draw, just yeah, makes makes a massive difference. So, yeah, we're, we're in the hunt for finals, but, I mean, you could almost say any team's in the hunt uh, that's in the top seven at the moment for, for a top four, and it's just going to come down to do you hold your nerve during the games that you need to win? Um, and then, yeah, how do you go in round 24? It's going to be uh, one of the most all-time great, crazy rounds of football. Looking forward to it. And Geelong will have West Coast in round 24 at the Cattery, so... That will be, yeah, that'll be obviously a result there which we want to try and get over the line. But, uh, yeah, circling back here, sitting six at the table at the moment, looking, uh, yeah, back back on track there with the wind or back on the winner's list more so. Um, again, I, I still would say we're not in the best two or three teams in the comp. Um, do I think we're the fifth or sixth best team in the comp at our best, maybe? Absolute best might be the top three or four. Um, but we're not going to know. I, I can just predict things. Like I predicted five five weeks ago that the season was over for us, so um, I can just predict these things out, but week to week, it, it changes so, so frequently like we've never seen before. Um, unprecedented sort of movement around the ladder and the evenness in which it's just a bit of a, you know, a, any time a team can just find a way to win, so any team on their day can get the four points, uh, as we've seen. Um, so yeah, uh, that makes it obviously exciting for the comp. It makes it not exciting for the coaches and the fans out there that just want to go into a game knowing they're going to win. It's not really the case now. It's very tough. But yeah, uh, look, good to get the win, find a way to get the four points, and hopefully, yeah, we can regroup, get back on track, and yeah, keep the wins ticking along, get ourselves to qualify as high as we can, and and uh, see how we go from there if we're good enough to make the eight. All right, that's all from me, folks. I hope you enjoyed the review, and if you did, give the video a like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with how the cats go week in, week out, and you can see how well or how horribly I'm going on the tipping competition side of things as well if you want to get amongst that. Um, I do my AFL tips each and every week for those of you not across that. But that, that's all from me, folks. Signing out. Have a good one, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.